Hey, Rich, it's time for another best of the worst. You excited? Yeah, me too. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Mm hmm. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's been great. The, the winter, though, right? So cold. <laughs> you and your hot takes. I thought the wall was a lot closer to me than it was. <clears throat> oh no, a grandma uh, arm. In the, ah! the ball. Who'd have thought we'd be terrible caretakers? I got it. That's right here. You got it? I got it, it's right here. Is it in okay shape? Yeah. I think we lost a few more flecks of paint off of the arm though. You guys are doing such a good job preserving them on your on your uh, moisture resistant shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is that the, that's the wall that leaks the water from the yeah. Oh, sure. We can do this. It's a it's showdown. So, shadow down. That's right. That's what it's called. Shadow down. Two sides of the street. One way to die. Directed by Leo Fong. That's right, motherfucker. Leo Fong in the hizzy. Leo Fong, for anyone who doesn't remember, he's uh he's low blow. Yeah, he's low blow. And uh the other one. Oh yeah. The <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, Leo Fong has not let us down yet. This is a first time for everything. Oh. A small southwestern town suddenly erupts into a war zone when a vicious motorcycle gang storms in. Sanctuary is not your ordinary town. Oh, ironic name. Oh. You get it? Uh, the violent town is called Sanctuary. Yeah. Let's just that Leo Fong. He's a, a clever. Guy who, shit. Oh my god! Oh my god, the town of Sanctuary, right? Its citizens are all retired gangsters! The entire town is retired gangsters! Yes! <laughs> Low blow! Who now want to live in peace and forget their turbulent past. But Kincaid, the gang leader, decides it's an excellent haven for his lucrative fencing and drug trade. F fencing like... Fen no, are you an idiot? Uh. Install fences around houses. You fucking moron. That would make more money. Frustrating, frustrated, the local law enforcement agent known as the commander, Richard Lynch. Oh, not Lobo. Calls on his old friend, James Long. <laughs> I wonder I wonder who plays James Long. <laughs> oh, he's got oh, his own. He's got a bazooka too. Why does he have a bazooka? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, everybody has a bazooka. <laughs> He just brought his from home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't kill any of them. Okay. And they still have a trailer full of bazookas. I just blew up three crates. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> okay, the party's over. Ah! Leo! Leo, not the girls! Don't shoot the girls! If only you just waited, Leo, eventually they would shoot off the side. <laughs> You're about to do it. Alright, so that was a fun movie. I'm just going to assume that Leo Fong, like, lazily kicks a bunch of people throughout the whole movie. It was great. Yeah. We totally watched it already. We did. That's how this show works. We came back here after we watched the first movie. So, on Best of the Worst, we watch a lot of like you know cheap knockoffs of whatever's popular at the time. Yeah. But right now, I am proud to present a truly, truly original idea. 
we have Max Magician and the Legend of the Rings. I, it's just, you just take popular IPs out of a hat and you go, okay, a Harry Potter, uh, Lord of the Rings, go! Just fucking go, that's so great. He's not wearing glasses, though. I would assume... That's what, that's what makes it wholly original, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> clearly see, he's not wearing glasses. You're right. Three and a half stars from Science Fiction Chronicle says a fantasy epic in the tradition of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. <laughs> So rich, we've watched an action movie, presumably, and a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and we know exactly what the second film we watched was. Yes. So here's our third movie. It's it's uh, Bloods versus Wolves. Let the battle begin. Prepare for the ultimate battle of evil. When two rival supernatural gangs wage war on the streets of New York City. The Bloods are affluent vampires who rule downtown, controlling the estate, blood banks, of course, and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. So they, they run the banks. I, th yes, that looks just like my loan officer. <laughs> the wolves are the werewolves, in case you didn't know. Oh, they're werewolves! Who rule the night in New York's uptown ghetto. Now, it's a battle to the death to determine who will run the city in the day, the night, and for all eternity. When did we become human, Lou? I've been contracted. I'm not... Not again! I think your part... Oh, and his... Oh. 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 What was he pulled out his uh, chicken breast. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's fine. <laughs> hey, she stayed in character. She did. It was a salvageable take. Yeah. Probably the only take, but that's fine. <laughs> We don't. We, we don't need to talk about the movies. We could just let's. Uh, well, let's just talk about which is the best of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Max Magician and the Legend of the Rings, obviously. I, I mean, it came out the most unscathed. We didn't riff on it a whole lot, so. Well, who's 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 taking the reins here? <laughs> well, like introduce. <clears throat> Welcome to Best oh. of the Worst. <laughs> I was so close. Nobody said, I gave, I gave a moment. I I, gave well, a moment. I hit the table. That doesn't mean anything. And then I was... Is I this was... some new rule that you've concocted? I would have, but I understand my fate. <laughs> <laughs> um, we watched two and one quarter, three and one quarter movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, our first film was Showdown. Uh, written, directed, and starring Leo Fong. Low the, blow! The legendary Leo Fong, That's who's right. been featured on this show. Multiple th times. Multiple, fourth time. Three, well, this is the fourth, yeah. This is the fourth, yeah. Low blow. Kill point. Kill point. S Blood Street. Blood Street, yeah. That was the one we couldn't remember the name of. Even though Blood Street, he is also playing the same character as Low Blow, right? Yeah. I, well, We're not giving sure. his naming convention, I just assume he couldn't think of an other name yeah. that rhymed with Leo Fong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, who's introducing the film? Oh, Mike, explain Showdown. Why me? Why not? Okay. Someone's got to do it. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Showdown stars, kind of stars Leo Fong as James Long. And there's a town in Nevada called Sanctuary, which is which is a disgusting, rundown <laughs> town. It's a hobo village. It's, yeah, it has like an old main street with like dirty buildings, and all the houses are like like falling apart mm. and trashy. But it's a it's a town where it's not incorporated in the United States. <laughs> It's completely off the grid. It's autonomous to any local or, or federal authorities. In, in fact, the paper sign outside of the town says no one welcome. <laughs> Non-residents prohibited? 
<laughs> How the fuck does that work? You live your life, you make millions of dollars in the mob, you're a successful career criminal, and then you, you go to retire in a rusty shack. <laughs> <laughs> In a town with a population of 500. Tell me how you like them. Uh, poached. <laughs> Clean up your kitchen if it's going to be on camera. Oh, oh this is horrible. What the hell? So how have you been, Dad? Great, great, just great. Thanks. My <laughs> life of crime did not pay off. <laughs> I'm living in a shack. I'm but... really proud of my house. <laughs> My shack is crumbling around me, and my sanity is dwindling every day, but... This looks like the worst place on Earth to live. Maybe Syria. But <laughs> or Florida. Th this is a second, yeah, yeah. Why would the mob bosses spend their millions of dollars on this? Why would our villains of the movie choose to make this their hangout? Well, well it, the villains in the movie, the biker gang, has chosen to make this their hangout because apparently the U.S. government has no reach in this town. There, there's a biker gang led by a guy named... Kincaid. Kincaid. Ooh. That's good. Ooh, I can remember Nice that. job, Rich. Yeah. Uh, who looks like uh, Carl from Die Hard. Uh, the big, big, tall German guy whose real name is Werner Herzog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I look into the eyes of Leo Fogg and I see nothing but darkness. <laughs> he leads a biker gang and the biker gang in the very beginning does a drug deal where they have big uh, 500 kilos of the top grade shit. They say something like that, right? Half a million dollars worth. So, what do we got going? Dawson and the dealer called, called Blades is coming with 50. Fifty kilos of pure shit. Wait, oh, wait a minute. You go, <laughs> they're fertilizing some crops. That's not how you describe good things, there sir. There is no corn. <laughs> this movie is fifty kilos of pure shit. Oh, oh snap! Fifty. Wow. Head headphone drop. <laughs> they were by my head. I didn't notice them. We never see them selling it. They just steal the money and the drugs. Yes. So, and so, so in the next scene, when we see the gang, they're strapped for cash. Strapped for cash, <laughs> yes. And they're robbing like the, the local like uh, convenience <laughs> store and flower shop for $11. Oh! Oh! Uh, news alert. News flash. <laughs> this, uh, wait, this just in? This, this just in. Mike just remembered something. It's, this is important. This is a big deal. Okay. Uh, we've often mentioned the phrase, Oh, yeah. Shoot the rodeo. And, and, and everybody's remembering now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shoot the Rodeo comes from a film called The Chooper? Well, the movie's called Blood Shack. The, movie's the, called the villain Blood in it, the killer, is called The Chooper. Connie? And it's a slow budget movie where they, they take their cameras out and they film a real live rodeo that's happening. Like the rodeo came into town when they were filming the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the story, if we want to get technical about it, the story is they shot the movie, realized it was too short. So they needed some more footage to pad out the runtime. There happened to be a rodeo coming to town. So they just filmed a bunch of B roll of the actual rodeo just to pad out the runtime. And so we've adopted that phrase as being shoot the rodeo. Yes. When a movie is just filming stuff to pad the runtime. It's not just adds, the, adds production, adds production value. value. Oh, look, yeah. look, well, there's a big rodeo. It's part of our movie. Yeah, it's not just big to pad the runtime. big budget we have. We got horses and a crowd and yeah. Yeah, not just to pad the runtime, to give it some production value. And this film, there is literally a rodeo and they are literally shooting the rodeo. So we are amazed that it actually happened. Look at that man counting dollar bills. That is certainly right there at the rodeo. <laughs> look, at, look at that dramatic counting bill action. He's counting his money. Remember, he's counting his money. He's like one dollar. He's totally <laughs> in the ticket booth for the he's rodeo. In the, yeah. Yes, he's he's counting those dollar bills, and he has he has forty two dollars. And Kincaid and his get biker gang rob him for forty two dollars, and they murder him. Mm -hmm. And then they hang out in the town for weeks. They say it's months. like three four weeks. <laughs> it's months. been at least. I think it's been at least seven weeks. Yeah. And, Something very important that I think you've glossed over is this town is full of nothing but very, very old people. This is our new home. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
What the? All the buildings are ready to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is it, guys. We've made it. We've made it. We've made it to... <laughs> Most of the runtime of the movie is made up of these bikers going into an establishment and fucking with the owners and pushing over elderly people. This is America, asshole. Yeah, and so Loblo is then contacted by... Uh, Richard Lynch. Richard Lynch, mm -hmm. who is the quote-unquote sheriff of Sanctuary, the, a town with no cops or law. So he says, low blow, this biker gang is coming to town. Help me take care of it. Low blow comes to the town, and three weeks later, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> he's, just, he's just there, and he does nothing for yeah. the longest time. It's, it's the most passive we've ever seen low blow. He lets so many old people get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? You know what we're talking about, old man. You know you got all your money stashed in that trailer. We've seen this 80 times! <laughs> we know that the gang is fucking with the locals! Wait. We know that! Oh my god. Oh my lord. There's a lot of elderly abuse in this film. Yeah. Not as funny as you would expect, though. Because it's, <laughs> it's just so awkwardly shot. For, for a town full of, like, former mafia hitmen, you'd, you'd think they'd just start shooting the bikers themselves. Yeah. Army. No, they're not! What? <laughs> they're a scuzzy biker gang! <laughs> Just shoot them and be done with it! No one has any guns, it's weird. Not they do! They pull occasionally they pull guns on the bad guys and then just don't shoot them? No, oh, yeah. Not, not just former mafia hitmen, but former mafia hitmen living in a town with literally no laws. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. You think they'd get have their secret mafia meeting and the town's like, let's kill all these motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> and that would have been a much better movie. Oh, yeah. That would have been great. Like, you you get, see like, them all the, walking down Main Street, pulling out their guns. You yeah. get the twist halfway through that it's the mob town and they yeah. themselves take care that, of the problem. That, that is what you predicted and that is what did not happen. I know, because the movie sucked. The ironic part is that Sanctuary Nevada is filled with former criminals when it really feels like it's like a town filled with pacifists. Because mm. they do nothing. <laughs> hey, old man. I'm a good catch. I'm filthy rich. You're filthy, all right. And then remember Loblo comes in and he wounds the one guy with the gun and there's Kincaid. And they're threatening the one girl with a butcher knife on the neck and in the flower shop. And Loblo's like, you go for now. I'll get you later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have all night, Loblo. <laughs> we got to watch Max Magician and The Legend of the Ring. There's so many other films to Come watch. on, Leo Fong, get move on. I've had a long day. I need some rest. We, uh, Loblo gets a little partner for some of the movie, uh, a young girl whose father is a former mafia enforcer. Well, she's very upset because her father gets exploded into another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a couple minutes before you start to sing up. Don't tell me the truck's gonna explode now because of this. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, movie, you're gonna do this? Well, I guess I'll try starting it now. Oh my god! <laughs> that was a spectacular flood. Did, <laughs> Did it disappear? Well, it's a weird transition because I thought his car was in front of his house. So, it, but it was at the mechanics. Yeah. So when it explodes, it does this like dissolve to his house. And I thought the car just vanished. Motorcycle gang killed him today. He vanished in an improbable explosion. <laughs> the entire car was atomized. <laughs> Listen, honey, it's called the quantum realm. <laughs> We're sending Ant-Man in to find him. We don't know. Well, can we talk about the girl, uh, the daughter of the guy mm -hmm. who gets blown up in the truck? Yeah. Let's call her Tammy. Tammy. Okay, we, we should give her a That's name. That's not her name. The lady's <laughs> name, we'll call her Tammy. She goes to the bar, the local bar, um, and then she almost gets raped. Uh -huh. Where's James Long? 
<laughs> yeah, Lobo isn't really, he's not carrying his weight in this film. Oh. There he is. He, he got lost. That's he's why. He's taking a dump behind him. <laughs> where is he? He looks like he's carrying a lot of weight to me. <laughs> uh, he was he was climbing up a dirty hill. <laughs> like, where do you think he went? <laughs> he's beating up homeless. <laughs> <laughs> why these guys don't have anything to do with the gang? We the don't gang know that. The gang is the problem, not they, these this, homeless these guys. Might be the gang. No, Aren't they? What the fuck you gonna do with that? Oh, well, you like a shovel head. <laughs> How would you like a shovel head? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's your big line? Oh, yes, it was. He spent days thinking of that. <laughs> but he rescues Tammy from being raped, and then she stays in his his trailer? Yes. His uh, Winnebago, yeah. whatever. Sure. Does Lobo own a, a trailer slash Winnebago? Yes. Because we never seen him drive it into town. No, he drives his little. Uh, his he has a. Car. He has like a, a Honda Accord. Or how did he get the trailer into town? Oh my god! He has a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so does he drive two cars? <laughs> did he rent the trailer? Is like that their hotel in the town? Uh, just a trailer. That's all they got. A dirty it's trailer. It's a fucking dump. Did he drive the the Toyota Corolla into Sanctuary? Yeah. And then Uber back. Sure. To wherever he came from, then get his, his Win Winnebago yeah. and take his Winnebago back to Perfection, Nevada. Per perfect. <laughs> Where but then, the tremors are. The, and then the tremor ate the truck that was carrying the Winnebago, so he had to drive and his the, first car. Uh, yeah. 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 The tremor eventually ate the Winnebago. We, uh, or, I'm or sorry, the, the what? The Winnebago. The, Winnebago. The, <laughs> the, the tremor ate the Toyota Corolla at some point. <laughs> Yeah. If I like only it. Loblo could have lured Kincaid out into the desert so that a tremor oh. could have swallowed him up. <laughs> we would have solved the whole problem. Mike, you're going full Uber here, and <laughs> I just got to say, I'm with it. I'm with it. I would bet all those Harley Davidsons out on the desert made a whole oh. bunch of sounds, you know? <laughs> And that would uh, attract all the tremors to the Harley Davidsons and swallowed up all the biker gangs. And then you know what? No more tremor worries for me. Yeah. That's what I'm Loblo says, I got a plan. I got a plan, Richard Lynch. Yeah. We got to call up my friend Kevin Does Bacon. your plan involve fire? No, Richard Lynch. <laughs> oh, thank God. It involves ancient <laughs> dinosaurs that live in Nevada. Well, Mr. Long, you're either really tough or really stupid because what you did today was crazy. And then she stays in his, his trailer, yeah. his uh, Winnebago, yeah. whatever, and she's eating a cereal. This is all you had in the kitchen. What do you live on? I don't eat breakfast. Um, and then he says, I never eat breakfast. Why does he have cereal <laughs> if he never eats breakfast? <laughs> he eats it for dinner. He might, he might have cereal for lunch. <laughs> he just he might just be really lazy. You yeah. just have an answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> the Picard show in this. He, he likes making Rice Krispie treats. Oh. Hey, there you go. Whatever we do, we better do it fast. Stop this carnage. Let's go. Stop okay. this car. Yes, do something fast! <laughs> Please do anything fast! They've spent two months. We haven't done jack shit. <laughs> it's been two months and they've killed threes of old people. <laughs> oh. So we, we have Sheriff and Girl and Loblo, and they're going to take down the biker gang who spent the last 90 minutes terrorizing old people. That's right. So after no buildup, they just go to the bad guy's warehouse and they shoot everybody. <laughs> Well, they shoot off camera, and then later they get shots of other people getting shots that are completely disconnected. Yes, but they murder a lot of this biker gang. and then Everybody except for Kincaid, That's who, right. who gets away. Mm -hmm. How'd you make out? I think we got them all. No, Kincaid got away. Kincaid got away. Yeah. I'm going after him. How about yourself? You? Yeah, it's between me and him. I'm going Shit. after him. <laughs> He's so passionate <laughs> about his films. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's between me and him. Yeah, it's between me and him, I guess. How did Kim Kid get here? Who are all these ladies? This is like a titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Kid would rather be here than at the shootout. Well, I mean, sure. Right, we would all rather be here, but... But, but where is he? And why... In the mood for some fun, cowboy. This is a brothel? Hey, this is Kim Kate. Get me Watson. 
He's coming in over here about two minutes. Who's Who this? Who? What? Way? What's going on? What is Whoa. happening? What's going on? This afternoon? I thought the deal was going down in two days. Yeah, it's okay by me if it's okay with Clutch. Yeah. But there's an actor in the film who also goes... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's talking on the phone. Oh, yeah, there's Don Jr. who's, you know. But he does it. Like, like a cow chewing cut or something. Uh, yeah. He does it because he's like, he just did six lines of blow before the take. <laughs> Maybe it's like Mr. Ed and they put peanut butter in his mouth. <laughs> just so they could dub over his lines later. Why are things still happening? What things are happening? I want to know why things are still happening. <laughs> We've had our we've had our you know our major action shootout finale of the movie. Yeah. The only thing the only thing that's left for the movie to do is to have uh, Leo Fong confront Kincaid for the final showdown. Right. This time and it's personal. Our, this time it's personal. It's the final showdown, and then the plot starts. Yep. Yep. <laughs> In the last fifteen minutes of the movie. <laughs> where 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 Kincaid sets up this this giant drug deal mm -hmm. between new characters we haven't seen before. Uh, someone who licks his lips constantly. Mm -hmm. And then, and then some guy who looks a little bit like a brother love without a tan. Freeze! Uh, there's a shootout in a warehouse. The shootout happens, Kincaid leaves. So Kincaid runs away, and instead of running after Kincaid, Leo Fong <laughs> runs to an old bartender in a bar. <laughs> hey, have you seen Ken Kate, the tall guy? Well, I've seen you him a couple of times. Just there. <laughs> but uh, not for uh, a few days. What? Yeah. Did, after that last scene, did Leo Fong just stop chasing him? He just, yes. He left where he was, then went to an unrelated bar to ask where he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the scenes are out of order. <laughs> Oh, he's not dead. How'd you know where to find this guy? Th that's what the bartender just told him. <laughs> Why did the bartender know where to find this guy? <laughs> then the lip-lipping douche bro tells Leo Fong where to find Kincaid, which Reluctantly, happens... even though Kincaid tried to murder him. Yes. That, that led to the, what may be the longest consecutive Rich Evans laughter moment. <laughs> <laughs> You know the warehouse you were just in? No, he's not in the warehouse on Carson Street. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a random parking lot. Did he just stumble across it? <laughs> This is that same warehouse. Yeah, it is. Yes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is God. madness. This is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> He's just trying to break into a car. Just randomly. <laughs> Leo Fong just runs after him. He stopped looking for him to go ask where he was. <laughs> Not he looking, was, he stopped he chasing stopped, him. He, he knew where he was. Him to ask where he was. It, yeah. Only to be told he was where he oh, was. Oh, he's in the spot where you were chasing him, low blow. <laughs> just, just, go, just go back to where you were chasing him. He's still there, I know. <laughs> Wait, you're arresting him? <laughs> you just shot everybody else! <laughs> I've had a long day, I need some rest. It's our next film, Max Magician and The Legend of the Rings, Rich Evans. Explain our experience of watching Max Legend, Max Magician, and the Legend of the Max Magicians. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> do, 
do I not suffer enough? <laughs> you talk, you do, guys read the whole back of the box and everything, and we, and we, I, and we watched the whole film. I would, I would love to tell you about Max Magician and the legend of, of, of the rings, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, that tape was nothing but a tracking mess of static, and we couldn't watch it. Yeah. So, so instead, I am, I am forced to talk to you about Robot in the family. Robot in the family! <laughs> oh God. <laughs> this has been one of the, I don't even know what, how, to, how to put words to my feelings <laughs> while watching this movie. Uh, a confusion. Me into a fountain, now I can flow with the waters. Oh daddy, look, no hands. Befuddlement. <laughs> <laughs> that city property! You can't, I worked hard to write those tickets! You, you ruined my vacation! Shock! No! Shame! Oh, horror! Yeah. I won again! Confusion! Oh, I have plenty of money. Oh, you like to play hide and seek too? After I get my lenses clean, I will come back and play with you. It short-circuited my brain like every five seconds. Yeah. Uh, Robot in the Family stars uh, Joe Pantaloons, <laughs> <laughs> who also produced Joe, Joe Pantaloons from The Matrix yeah. <laughs> and Baby's Day Out. And he, in the style of Borat, he, <laughs> he plays a foreign man. Bondiga. Oh my God, what happened to you? Mayday, Mayday. Is there any reason his character is no. Turkish? Absolutely no. none. He's from Turkey. Yeah, he's, he's from, from Turkey. Turkey. His accent changes a bit throughout the movie. There's there's like three scenes in a row where he sounds like Tommy Wiseau. It's his heavy Italian accent comes through. Yeah, he sounds like Tommy Wiseau. Exactly you know, like so Tommy Wiseau. Scenes. Alex, stay here. Don't talk to anybody. I'll right? be right back. Watch my kid, please. <laughs> Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. <laughs> Watch my kid, please. Oh, there's John Rice Davies. Just yeah. Oh, hi, John Rice Davies. So, but he's he's he owns an antique store, and he's also a wacky inventor who has put his family heavily in debt. But he is he has apparently spent the last of the family's money to build a toy life-sized robot for kids that seeks out gold and also has alarms <laughs> to protect the family when it's in danger. Hi, your daddy. Are you all love very much. Have answered to the nation's greatest crime epidemic. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you... Well, again! Hey, mommy, I'm your new home security robot and your sixth child. And it's ch uh, the robot, it, it, it thinks that he's his father because he keeps calling him daddy. And it doesn't understand anything that's going around around them. And the house's yard is filled with toys. Because they have 14 children. And, and then his neighbor, John Rice Davies, uh, who also owns an antique store. Right next door. Right next door. Not to his house, to... The antique oh, no, store. Oh, no, 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 Joey Pants' antique store. He's the store. neighbor to his house, and he is also owns the antique store next to Joey Pantaloon's antique store. It's a major coincidence that is never explained in the movie. Maybe it's like uh, like the new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Where yes. it's like, it's a spite store. A spite store. Latte Larry's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy has a coffee shop and, and Larry David is mad at him. So he buys the real estate right next door so he can open up a spite coffee shop. Mocha Joe. That might make sense, Jay, but you're assuming that something in this movie might make sense. Yeah. That, that, that movie is the antithesis of sense. <laughs> And yes. logic, <laughs> it, it literally is. That's a pull quote right there. Yeah, I, I said it, it would cure insanity. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's in utter, it, this movie stands in utter spite of the concept of sense <laughs> and making sense. It, 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 yeah, uh, we, 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 might, we might oversell movies that are on best of the worst. Yeah. I have never seen a movie that Nonsensical. Danger, intruder. You no. crook, I no, got you now. Oh. Intruder, the malfunction. No, malfunction. Detective. Oh. No, I'm, I'm they didn't know how to end that scene, so they just played it out. <laughs> oh my god. Detective? 
Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't think this was possible. I, I blame you. I didn't think this level of incompetence was was possible. We were our brains were literally melting. And that and abrasive. Abrasive, well. nonsensical. It's, 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 it's just a cacophony of noise, constantly. Constant yelling. Get him over there! Swear smile side to side there! Oh, 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 I tell you! Shut up! This the scenes make you feel like tight in the chest. A yeah. weight yeah. is put on you, and then when uh, the brief moments of silence, you can breathe. It's it's noise. It's amazing. Uh oh! I think I will take this to the shop and sell it as an antique. Now for the pizza, we need flour. Oh. I'm a pizza person. Sorry, Cindy. I'm gonna show mine. Something to mix them in. Everybody, get down on the floor and mix. <laughs> what in the fuck? <laughs> I can. Catch her in the rye. Catch her in the rye. Because rye bread. Oh. He's confused. Oh, hey, I thought he was going to shoot the president. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to zoom in on my face. <laughs> oh, zoom in yeah. on my face. Any of our faces. And, <laughs> and just, just fast forward to the movie at like 100 speed. And it's like. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, I, I guarantee you, my expression during the whole film is going to be amazing. It's utter shock. I'm, yeah, <laughs> it's like movie. you're on a roller coaster into your own grave. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like people say, that, like uh, the grave uh, of reason, Mike. Uh, the my, grave my, of reason. My, my concept of bad movies is entirely changed <laughs> after seeing Robot in the Family. Like people say, the room is bad. Ooh, Tommy Wiseau. You, you watch this. <laughs> Better. Hey, what, what is this? Who is this guy? Somebody please help me. Stereotype Nation. <laughs> it's a Hasidic Jew and a uh, Hare Krishna. There's a lot of Hasidic Jews in New York. I, that's that's fine, but and a Beastie Boy. What? Oh. What? Doing, you, all right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's is that is that uh, that's Joy Pants in disguise. No, Joy Pants is at the auction. He's in the auction. <laughs> ah, this is this, this is just a guy that has a fake beard on. This is just happening what? on the outside of the world, and oh, a robot in the family is gonna to save him. What? Is that Iggy Pop? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, oh my God! God! Don't kill him! Don't oh. kill him! <laughs> Uh, I, I, He's I, got Jesus powers? Uh-oh, I detect danger. I told him to stay away from the solar car. I think I'm having a, a heart attack. <laughs> I, I think I might be having a heart attack. I can't see, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. Ah! Oh my God. Robot in the Family is just, yeah, it is, it's like constant noise. Scenes happen and then they stop, and then more. Someone starts yelling, and then more madness happens. It feels like someone's like dream. I love wake you. up, Daddy! Wake up! Someone's dream that you know, like a dream makes no sense. Mm -hmm. They took that and made it in a movie, and it's like they're filming it, and they had like two or three cameras rolling, and everything's happening, and they're just like filming nonsense <laughs> that happens. And then, and then they go back and they, they overdub it, and then Some they edit it. it together. There's like toy robots but, that but are watching. But the people that are overdubbing it also aren't apparently watching the movie just because everyone is shouting. Here's an example. Uh, we start off with, you know, we have our, our wacky robot that doesn't understand things. Gold, solid gold! My daddy's gonna be so proud of me. At present, hey. gold is worth $400 hey. an ounce. 
Hey, you! The symbol of exile! And then we find out about the ancient artifact that has been stolen from the Middle East that will prevent world peace. War continues to rage in the Middle East as two religious factions blame each other over the theft of the sacred helmet of Suleiman. So These two things happen right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's close-ups of how the robot works the, with The voiceover. stakes yeah. are extremely high in this movie because if they don't <laughs> find that, that, that ancient helmet, There'll never be world peace in the Middle East. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and then Joey, the, the the helmet is hidden inside of a replica of a full size oh, no, statue. That's, that's way. <laughs> don't, don't, we can't, what are you doing? We what are you can't doing? even get there. What is, yet. What is he doing? It's like it's like you're. No, no, no. Don't, it's, don't even why. Jay, Jay, why Jay, try to unpack that? We haven't even set up where the well, robot. We haven't even from. started. You're talking 45 minutes down the road. We're talking about the stakes, right? We're talking about the stakes of the movie. World peace. Or, or not world peace. <laughs> so Joey Pants spends the whole movie trying to get the statue that has the helmet in it that'll help so, world peace. So then the but then at the end of the movie, no, but then at the end of the movie, Joey Pants he doesn't know that the helmet is in there even though he's been chasing it the whole movie. Joey Pants doesn't want the statue. You're wrong. He does want the statue. He gets the statue. He goes to the auction to buy the statue. To specifically yeah. to buy that statue. We thought it was because he knew that the helmet was inside yeah. the statue. Well, apparently he doesn't. He but just apparently went there to buy he the doesn't. Statue. And remember, he built the robot to find gold, and then when the robot says there is gold in this statue, that he you doesn't know believe there's gold in. Come on, gold oh. digger. Let's go home, Alex. It's gold, solid gold. Believe me, Daddy, gold. You already know the gold was in the statue. Why wouldn't you believe the robot when he finds the gold, the gold that was hidden robot? in the statue? Yeah. They still haven't figured it out. But there's a golden helmet, but there's also a golden statue that's not yes. the big statue. Yes. Well, that's what I wanted to mention the, in no, terms the statues, of... statues, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, in, in terms of like... That's talking, an unrelated ancient priceless artifact that has been stolen. That's what I mean when you say this is like a dream. When you say this is like a dream, how it's like there's ideas in your head and concepts that kind of connect, but Do they don't make sense. remember when everybody fell in the sewer? <laughs> they got covered with shit? Ah! Do you remember when the robot violently assaulted a police officer? Do you remember when the robot got an army of little toy robots to believe that he was a god? You wanna be my friend? Great! Come with me and we will find your daddy. They're sentient? <laughs> Now hand over those tickets, you chicken. Oh, You're not going oh, anywhere. Got babies. Put me down. Meet my friends. Now give it up. The tickets here. Take the tickets. Take the tickets. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't believe this. You remember when John Rice Davies stabbed a rat? You remember when the kids started randomly electrocuting people? You remember when two Hasidic Jews walked past a blind person who got mugged? Correction. Left, left. 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 I the right, the right, go the guy. Things to north, to left, 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 left. Daddy, what? make up your mind. Which way? This no, way. right, that's right. The robot never is not talking. Yeah, yeah. It's like he was directed by Paul Feig. Oh. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep talking. Maybe it'll be funny. Just talk. Go diggers. Five yeah. equals three yeah. point one four two Straight. three. MC Straight. squared. That right. daddy. Touch, I'm running out of power. Shut up. I gotta change the capacitor. Who is the robot? The robot was played by four different people. At least one of them had to leave the production because he was hospitalized. <laughs> I, um, but according to IMDb, one of them is uh, John Patrick Shanley the playwright and screenwriter who wrote Moonstruck and uh, Joe versus the Volcano. <laughs> Is that true? That can't be correct. I, I refuse no, to believe. No, it has to be correct. It's too <laughs> random to not be correct. Well, in the credits, it's a John Shanley. Yeah, so it could be someone else who has the same name and IMDb, whoever entered that information, fucked it up because IMDb isn't always accurate. That'd be weird. Um, that would be weird, though. But I would like you to think, think that it's you actually... You think that would be weird? Yeah. You think that would be weird? I just said it's a little weird. <laughs> it's David Mamet? It's, that's the thing. He, David Mamet was the one that was hospitalized. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's kind of dark. You know? I'm just a little fuzzy on the details. Is that Big Mouth? That does sound, yeah. Exactly. What am I gonna do? 
<laughs> I'm just gonna watch this. <laughs> Based off of the back of the box and the front of the box, you're thinking that this movie is going to be about a robot and a family. Yeah. It is not. No. The It's not even about the fucking robot. No. <laughs> there is a robot and a family. There, that's true. The plot of this movie is the dad of the family trying to solve a crime that he has nothing to do with. Dr. Playan's office. Orthopedic surgery and fine art reproductions. Edie speaking, can I help Why does she you? sound like a phone sex operator? Oh, Dr. Player is the best bone cutter in the business. You know what's crazy? What is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yes, I'd like to Do you have an Dr. appointment? Playhan? No. Would you like an appointment? Yes. We have plenty of time. No problem at all. Is this whole movie ad lib? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a doctor's office? Yes. And the joke is everyone is in casts? Why are people in the waiting room already in casts? I just want something to make sense, damn it. A, a, a follow-up exam? Rich Trump, stop trying to make sense. The doctor has a, a helmet fetish, yeah. and his receptionist <laughs> has a foot fetish. So while searching for the first stolen golden idol, the, the receptionist specifically says that he sets bones correctly. Like, he is a bone doctor that is not working in a hospital. But he's also obsessed with casts and helmets. And he's this part-time sculptor. That's the weirdest thing. We cut to his office, and there's like a little guy on a horse statue, which I think was also in the movie earlier. Do you like it? I made it myself. And, and he says, do you like that? I made it myself. And then the scene just continues. Well, no, it was no. just a thing that happened. And then he has a gigantic foot cast on. Why do they put a cast on his foot at all? I don't know. <laughs> and then the receptionist is in the doctor's office, and she's like, "Ooh, you've got a cast on your foot." And it looks like she wants to start to <laughs> do foot to, things, to have sex with his yeah. cast foot. And this children's film about a robot and the family. <laughs> Bernini. Oh, Dan. A plaster cast of his foot. And the receptionist is as weird a, and sexual. As a foot fetish of a cast foot fetish. Time for a bubble bath. Yuck, I have cereal caught in my servos. Newspapers are food for the mind. Cereal is food for the stomach. The, the robot looks like Max Hedron fucked a traffic light. <laughs> Looks like Max Hedrum fucked the Tin Man <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a light bulb factory. <laughs> Fuck. And he's wearing the calendar helmet from uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. We, like, who, we, who fucked the guy who is uh, Pizza the Hut's assistant. Oh, yeah! It's oh, yeah. Spaceball. <laughs> I was thinking of the electric guy from The Running Man. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of influence on this film. Yeah. No, and you know, the robot gets so much buildup in the beginning of the movie. It starts with like a dream that Joe Pantaleonos is having. Daddy, the crazy clock is going crazy. Then the robot is built immediately and he's like unveiling it to the family, talking about all the neat things it does. Like it can call 911 if you just scream at it. It's very <laughs> impractical. <laughs> 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 Yes, that's appropriate. That's pretty fucking frightening to a two-year-old. Did anybody else think it was odd that the evil thief neighbor overheard him talking about the robot that senses gold, has no interest in stealing the robot that can find gold? <laughs> that would be a plot. <laughs> You're talking about Sala? Yeah. You'd think John Rice Davies, the plot would be about him trying to steal the robot sensing, the gold sensing robot from the family. Yeah. And this is after a series of scenes with the robot bonding with the family. And so then they're like, oh no, he stole our new friend and they have to get him back like a, like a family film would do. <laughs> well, the robot had a hard time bonding with the family because 
He just poured like flour on their heads. Yeah. He, had a, he had a very hard time cooking breakfast. Oh, your energy! How am I gonna get out of this jam? Kids, don't try this at home. Help me! My circuits are becoming green cheese! I'm gonna make something special for mommy and daddy. A smooth and nutritious meal. No one can help you. Spam is necessary for the Now I know how you feel when I make you do Picard videos. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I'm gonna barf. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we at? Fuck, the story. man. Where's the movie? It where's doesn't the matter. Movie, man? I, I just know we have the cast scene, and then for some reason he wants to buy the statue. Yeah. Why did he? We, that was after he tracked Bono and Clyde to the oh, docks. Bono and Clyde. Right. That's a whole other little. He tracks subplot. Bono and Clyde to the docks. Who are different thieves that also steal things, though they didn't steal the Mystic Helmet well, from they the Middle East. They steal things for John Rhys Davies, right. right? They do, and they I wanted so. to steal the Mystic Helmet, but they got the wrong statue. Remember, that they happened? showed they showed up at Gimli's house, but they had the different statue. It happened in the movie. I believe you. Hey, can so, you, lots of things happened in the movie. Can you call him Sala, not Gimli? I know him as Gimli. He is Gimli, son of Gloin. Sala. Uh -huh. yeah, you can call him Salah. I understand that reference, but he's Gimli. I'm only calling him Sliders. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of the show, because he really likes tiny hamburgers. <laughs> he <just loves> tiny <laughs> <cheeseburgers. laughs> and it is something that man was not meant to disturb. Death has always surrounded it. <laughs> Thicko, thicko. But but you know yeah. what? He's a good actor, and he, and I, I feel bad for him, legitimately. He got paid. Uh, <laughs> did he? I'm sure, I'm sure it wasn't much work. Uh, he probably didn't. You you gotta wonder what the behind the scenes on this movie was like. Yeah. As far as like direction. A Maybe he yeah. lost a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, he has a gambling problem. He lost a bet. He was he was like gambling. It was him, and it was the writer of uh, Moonstruck. <laughs> 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 jo Joey Pants and Joey Pants, and they, they all lost big. Uh, They're all in Vegas. And that's why Joey Pants got the associate producer's credit, because he's like, you guys got to pay off your debt. Ah, be in this weird movie I'm yeah. doing, yeah. That's a really good theory. Joey Pants, John Rice Davies, and what's his name? John Patrick Shanley. They're all in like, like somewhere, some bar. Mm. <laughs> they're in the high roller room at like the, the horseshoe casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're just laughing. Like, I had this dream last night about this, this fucking robot that could detect gold. I had this, this fucking plot that makes no sense. Like, Let's make funny. a movie about it. I had a it. dream about an ancient helmet being stolen from the Middle East. And I had a dream about a nurse with a cast fetish. <laughs> Whoever lo whoever w loses the Los Angeles Raiders football game has to make this movie. And they all lost. And, uh, yeah. It was a tie. John it was a rare tie. Yeah. So they all had to make the movie. I like well, it. I think Joey Pants came out on top. John Patrick Shanley had to be in the costume. He, he got he, hospitalized. <laughs> yeah, he got he he had the low end of the bet. The the, the point spread, you know. <laughs> And it was like, oh, you got to be in the fucking costume of the robot. <laughs> How weird is it that the robot could detect gold? It doesn't make any sense. That's, That's his name, Gold Digger. Gold That's Digger. weird. Yeah. Remember the theme song? It was like a James Bond theme song. Yeah. Like Goldfinger, mm -hmm. it was like yeah, Gold Digger, yeah. Gold I Digger, I don't and there was the theme song. yeah, there was a theme song. Remember, because we thought they were saying the N word. Yeah, oh, that's right. yeah, there was a fucking theme song. It sounded about like they were saying Go N word. Yeah. Yes. For, and, for a second, I thought you were talking about it in Showdown when they started blatantly using part of the James Bond theme. Oh yeah, that happens. No, they sing Gold Digger. What a weird night. <laughs> Statement of the year, Jay. <laughs> what a weird night. Oh, I clicked on user reviews, and the first one just says, What? <laughs> <laughs> Does the second one say no? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the best review possible. What? <laughs> I've fallen 
and I can't get up. So then we watched Bloods vs. Wolves. So... <laughs> Pa- is this, this is you, right? This, I guess this is me. Go uh, for it, Jack. Here, well, uh, you know, before we get to actually Blood versus Wolves, something more interesting to talk about is our selection process, <laughs> which is uh, not, no slight against Blood versus Wolves, but the ideal best of the worst show has a has an insanity ramp up. Mm-hmm. You know, you start with a lighter movie, get a little crazier, end on a big crazy high note. We don't watch the movies beforehand, so we just don't know how bad a movie is going to be. If Bloods vs. Wolves was the first movie of the night, what a, what a glorious night that would be. Blood vs. Wolves, Showdown, Robot and the Family, perfect ramp up. Bad, worse, <laughs> oh my Robot God. and the Family. Robot and the Family. So. No, this is like when we did uh, Ryan's Babe, and then we had to follow it up with Demon Warp, and it was like, oh. Um. Right, and so... See, that goes to show you, I, I just thought Ryan's Babe was the last movie. That's how memorable yeah. Ryan's Babe yeah. was yes. relative to everything else that yeah, night. Yeah, this might, might as well just be a spotlight episode for Robot and the Family. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very sorry, Bloods versus Wolves, but you were a little bit of a letdown <laughs> yeah. after Robot and the Family. All right, well, just leave me alone, all right? And I won't call the cops, all right? Yeah, yeah. Just leave me alone. We're good, we're good. Did you see a werewolf? He did! What, what? Oh, he's a vampire, and they knew that. Wait, that was a werewolf? They're werewolves. No, they're vampires. Wolves! Oh. They're wolves! Why do wolves have vampire teeth? They just got fangs, like a wolf. But also vampires have fangs. They're just not fully transformed yet. That doesn't make... Well, that... Wait, that, well, that makes a <laughs> mild amount of sense, but it's also extremely confusing. I understand what is going on in the movie, and its 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 reach is not as far as its its budget. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a classic case of like you see the movie and you're like, I can see what was probably in their head when yeah. they came up with these ideas. There's not a ton to say about it, unfortunately. Um, it's not horrible. It's the, watchable. The biggest takeaway is the guy who plays the, the lead werewolf, what we, we looked at a boss's name? Malik Burke. He is too good for this movie. Yeah, he's trying. He, he gives it his all. Mm-hmm. He's not in, a, not in a sarcastic way. Yeah. Like, he nails a weird and schlocky part. I'm a werewolf, bitch. Well, the idea is that the the vampires are feuding with the werewolves and have for centuries, and so we have a and there's like also like a like a class thing going on where like the vampires are higher class. Oh, look at that paper plate with the fancy uh, hors d'oeuvres on it. This were just olives. <laughs> They're just olives with toothpicks. Just simple olives on toothpicks. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> He's aware. Okay. We have the scene where the head vampire and the head werewolf meet up in a bar. They call it a golf club, but it's not. It's a bar. Um, And these very claustrophobic close-ups to avoid showing that it's just a bar. (laughs) Let me tell you a story, Asuma. I tried to assimilate. I had a wife, a daughter. I ate them. But yeah, he gives us like emotional scene about, you know, his struggles and his background. And then we cut to the next scene and a guy takes his shit on the floor. <laughs> this is That's we, the joke cuz he's like a he, like a he's like animal. A dog. We can end the discussion now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this apartment rich Jack, whose theory was it that the film was produced by a real estate? Oh, well, yeah. That's the, that's the only other noteworthy thing about this movie. Yeah. Every location in this film is completely barren. Mm. Yes. No furniture in sight. There's, there's one scene, they give it an excuse, like the first meetup between all of the werewolves and the vampires. It's like, the snooty vampires didn't want fleas on their furniture, yeah. so we had it all removed. And, and then we see where the werewolves hang out. And it's an empty room. And then they With go to rob. metal studs, because they haven't put up the walls yet. They go to rob the bank, and it's an empty wall. Oh, the bank robbery scene is a whole <laughs> other story. Oh, 
Oh, well, this is a bank. I don't see no more tellers. You won't have to wait. Everybody get on the floor right now. Keys. Rich, they really filmed in a bank. How did they do that? I don't know. If you don't give us the key. How did they get access to a bank? They showed the outside of a bank. Of a bank. And then this is clearly the inside of the bank. Jay, Jay, they're filming in a bank. This is a bank robbery. They showed the outside. Oh, okay. And you can tell it's a bank because it has white walls. I'm pretty impressed. Banks okay. have they're white robbing walls. the bank teller. I'm surprised there is. You can see the teller's counter. And they're doing all these extreme the close ups just for dramatic purposes. Well, you can hear right? them clicking on the keyboard, which means it's a bank. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't have a little cork board with the layout of the bank. Wait, is this <laughs> the bathroom in the bank has a shower? They're, they're stretching the limitations of their budget. The vampires are supposed to have luxurious estates right. with a butler, um, but the most they could do was a, a 600 square foot one bedroom apartment in Manhattan. And also... Which cost $5,000 a, $5, a week to run. <laughs> and then also, the werewolves lived in an apartment that was under construction, which had one fridge and a cabinet <laughs> and a stove and a bunch of metal studs where they had yet to put in the drywall. Yeah. And it, that was it. That was their filming location. The, the best we can make sense out of it is that somebody involved with the production worked in real estate and was able to get them access into places they were trying to sell that had no furniture in them. Right. And then the plot which leads into the most important location of all, the vampire guy, the bald guy. What is this? What is this? Olives, sir. He wants to have peace with the werewolves. And he says, uh, we're, we're, we're vampires. We're affluent, we have properties, and you werewolves are, eh. How about you guys run this dance club? It's Ryan. I know about the Hampton Inn. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dance club. No, it's the wedding hall. Oh. The... It's the dance club. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the holiday. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Shit, we're going to have so many bar mitzvahs in here. <laughs> It makes you wonder, like in, in reality, where they shot that. How many the Hampton Inn? How many magical wedding memories have people had in that location? <laughs> the same location that this uh, end fight scene happens in. The famous vampire v werewolf fight scene. In Do they have a plaque on the wall somewhere in New York. Yeah. Whoa, another fight scene! Oh fuck! Oh, just move the camera. Barf. Oh. oh. The way the music was playing, I thought it was gonna hard cut to like a. Like a to be continued kind of thing. Oh. I, di I didn't expect a great fight scene at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> I just want the the person to come in and go, yeah, you just have the room for five more minutes. <laughs> Everybody stops. The camera zooms in. <laughs> 10 o'clock, we lock up. Uh, a quick note about camera work. In oh, Bloods yeah, yeah. Versus yeah. Wolves. Oh, two, yeah, yeah. Two important notes. One, they have a dolly. Left and right are the two important notes. <laughs> <laughs> they have a three foot dolly. We got a dolly. Oh, they're going to use that dolly. Look, yeah. they swept. We're dollying back. <laughs> Whoops, we didn't mean to. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Oh, no, look, it's dollying again. <laughs> Dolly, dolly, dolly. <laughs> dolly back, dolly back. And that dolly is apparently on a rubber band because it just keeps, <laughs> whoa, keeps oh, bouncing Oh, I thought you were going to say cameras are not invisible and neither are vampires. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the yeah. DVX 100 by Panasonic is not <laughs> invisible. Uh, you can tell the difference between the vampires and the werewolves because they just both have fangs. The only difference is that the werewolves can be out during the day but the vampires are also out during the day. They just say it's night. <laughs> the scene where there's sunlight blaring in the windows, it's nighttime. Well, <laughs> ignore that. Both are immune to day for night. <laughs> oh, that's the blood center? I would not give blood there. No, no. Oh, oh my god! Oh, Dr. Badass! <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> 
Not the, the blood, blood donation spell. doctor was packing heat. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the blood bank. And they have their confrontation with the 16-year-old doctor. You think, you'd think if he knew about the fact that ancient vampires stored blood, vintage blood, yes. in his blood bank, which was one old refrigerator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in in, in, in a, a strip mall, shopping mall, like, storefront with no drywall. <laughs> <laughs> they would say, hey, hey, guy, little, little like, like 21 year old Indian kid in a, in, a, in a doctor's coat. Occasionally vampires or werewolves may show up looking for this blood. Yeah. Don't take your Glock out and try and shoot them. He was working, he, he was thinking about his boss. To me, that made he, the most sense. He wanted sense. that promotion. It made the most sense because <laughs> when you have something valuable okay, like- Okay, Alex Kurtzman. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what? Just, they're, they're, they're putting, putting garlic, garlic in, in the, the blood. blood. Oh. He's just gonna open the blood bag and put the so garlic in there. Yeah, they will never That's, notice. And they drink it out of wine glasses on Grandma's table. Hey, a piece I, of furniture. I yeah, a table. This is another case though where you think of like what they probably had in their minds, and I'm picturing like instead of like this, a blood like, bank, for, like like this huge like warehouse with like cryogenic tubes. Yeah, because like, it's supposed to be like a private. There. Facility. Yeah. It's his personal yes. blood bank, yeah. uh, or like a like a wine cellar looking place. Because they dr the next scene, they drink the blood in wine glasses. Yes, That's yes. the whole thing. Is that the werewolves break in and they like put? There's the secret door to it in the back of the fancy nightclub. Yes. Yeah, ah. something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the werewolves break in and they just shove full cloves of garlic into the the Ziploc <laughs> bags of blood. Nobody Exe notices that. Executed poorly, but a fairly clever idea. It, it could have been a fun idea, yeah. But then, yeah, so the next scene, they drink it and they all die. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I see I, what you were trying to do. And I think that's a lot of Bloods versus Wolves. It's like they, they were going for something and they had zero budget. We can all appreciate that. Yeah. But they, they were trying to say something of substance while also showing people shitting on the floor. <laughs> showing them shitting on the floor. Yeah. Th that's an important point, Jack. Yeah. Th they were trying to say something. That's right. Uh, can you talk about that in detail? <laughs> oh, sure. African-American culture. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> You're, I, you're the authority. I'm the authority, <laughs> obviously. Let's let's have these four middle-aged white guys yeah. from Wisconsin <laughs> explain to you about the black experience yeah. class. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I've listened to a Wu Tang album or two in my time. I know. I know everything all about it, <laughs> and I'm going to explain it all to you right, right now. now. What were they going I'm for? Going. I think we were joking during the discussion that this is ripe for a Jordan Peele remake. Yes. He's he's the guy to do it. So, uh, <laughs> best of the worst. Oh, come We're on. Here. Oh, We're here. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rich. My brain can't answer that. <laughs> you know what the but, right answer is. But Rich, is can your heart? It's yeah. a, your heart. Yeah. It's, it's Schrodinger's robot in the family. It's both the best and the worst thing we've ever watched at the same time. I won't, I won't know which it is until we open the box. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that cat's alive or dead. And we can never open that box. <laughs> we, can, we should never open that box. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, it's robot, and everything has changed. Once again, there, every, every once you get a Ryan's Babe, you get a Dangerous Men. You it's, get, what, it's what they call a watershed film. Yes, best of the worst watershed. Yeah, or um, nine eleven film. <laughs> it's the nine eleven of nothing. Best will of the worst. Be the same. <laughs> yeah, everything's changed after it. Uh, robot in the family. Uh, my pick for best of the worst. Yeah, Showdown bad. Leo Fong bad. Ah, bad low budget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm I, <laughs> I know. And and I want to see this movie, like on Blu-ray. Yeah, someone needs to remaster this. Th this is this. Who is, owns the Apex Library? <laughs> Apex. Yeah. Vinegar Disney. Syndrome. Can it's you get Disney. on this? Come on. It's Disney. They own everything. It's just gonna show up on Disney Plus. <laughs> We have to find out who owns the rights. Some behind the scenes featurettes would be great. It's interviews with the cast. Interview with Joey Pans. Oh, I'd love to do that. Was I in that? Well, yeah, like talk to the guys in the robot costume, whoever went to the hospital. <laughs> 
talk to the uh, the doctors that work at the hospital. Do you remember? Did he? Do you think he showed up into the ho- in the hospital in the costume? <laughs> that would have been a confusing <laughs> night. Oh my god! Should, should we do something terrible to showdown? I don't think any of the movies are worthy of destruction. Should we, should we blow up Magician Max and the Legend hey, of the Rings? Yeah, 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 this is fun. Why not? Oh Tape doesn't work anyway. Fuck it. It doesn't work, and it's a horrible ripoff of two popular IPs. Presumably. Boom. Maybe more. Come on. <laughs> well, fuck you, Magician Max. Yeah. 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 No, I'm going to teach your movie, you a lesson. Your movie might be okay, but fuck you anyway. Fuck you for forcing us to watch what might be one of the most interesting weird movies we've ever seen. Yeah. What? Well, Jay, it's now time to destroy a movie. That's right, Mike. We're going to make Max Magician disappear. And we're just going to do it nice and simple this time. Just uh, just beat the hell out of it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> That's right. Where's the sledgehammer? I thought you grabbed the sledgehammer. No. No. Oh. I, I think it's in the back room there. All right, I'll go get it. All right. Oh, no. What is it? It can't be! What is it? You want to see? What? What? Oh, no. No, no, no! Are we still going to destroy the tape?